In this video, the second in a series of two, the role of retarded Eddington Finkelstein coordinates in removing the coordinate singularity in the Schwarz style geometry is investigated. This is achieved by using the outgoing geodesics of the Schwarz style geometry to create new coordinates and a new line element that is free of this coordinate singularity. This also leads to the creation of a new object called a white hole, the existence of which has to date not been confirmed. And a paper on it has been can be found at this location here. Alright, so here we are, Schwarz style geometry. Um, here we have the photons here on the outgoing radial null geodesics. And this Schwarz style line element is this object here. Now, the Schwarz style coordinates TR theta phi and the associated line element is this object here, just written this form here. And you can see that at r equals 2 gem on c squared, you have a singularity, which turns out is not a physical singularity, merely only a coordinate one. A real singularity at r equals 0 exists, and this line element is regular or continuous or defined in the region here. Now it's singular at r equals 0 and uh, this object here, r equals 0 is a real physical singularity and this one is not. So the latter, this one, the Schwarzschild radius, is merely a coordinate singularity. Now we can search for better coordinates by probing the space-time with geodesics based on the world lines of radially outgoing photons. Now if a geodesic exists in one coordinate system, it will be valid in all other coordinate systems. So the geodesic of a radially outgoing photon in a Schwarzschild coordinates is this object here. This was found in a previous video. I think it might be video number 9 in the Schwarzschild geodesic series. So let's start by using the integration constant above, this one here, as our new coordinate and denoted by the letter V. And it'll be known now as the retarded time parameter. So V is the retarded time parameter. And we have V equals constant. Now this is a null coordinate since um, dV is the differential of the constant is zero, and if you keep r, theta, and phi constant, then ds squared will still be zero, and hence it is a null coordinate, because the line element will be zero for it. Now this leads to its expression here, v equals basically where the, the word constant here, put the letter v, the retarded time parameter, and rearrange this object, and we'll end up with this one here. Now let's take the differential, the, the, sorry, the differential of this variable, dv, and do that to both sides. And we get this object here, dv is c dt minus dr minus this constant times this. And this is just a repeat uh, of the algebra in the last video, except that with some different signs, of course. c dt minus dr minus this object here, our common denominator here. And then we see that uh, the numerator here and this part of the numerator over here cancel, and we're left with this object here. And a little bit of factorizing to put in a different form, dv is cdt minus this more recognizable form here, um, factorizing out the c squared here and the r, and we'll see that we get this object here. Next step, cdt is dv uh, plus this object here. And then what we need to do is take c squared dt squared. So here we go. We're going to take uh, the square of this object here, these two terms, and expanding that out, we get dv squared plus the second term here, two times this times this, plus the square of the last term. And here we go. ds squared is now uh, is the sorry coming back to the Schwarzschild line element. That's just this line here repeated again. And where c squared dt squared is, we're going to put in this object here. And so next line down, we have this factor in front, and then c squared dt squared replaced with this object here, plus the remaining terms on the end, this one and this one, the angular part and the radial part here, and keep going. And when we do that, and collect some, multiply through by this factor, we make some things disappear, and we end up with this here. We tidy it up a little bit further because notice this and this, which are then going to cancel out, and we're left now with a line element like this. And so our new line element in retarded Eddington Finkelstein coordinates is this object here. 
Notice this line element has removed the coordinate singularity at the Schwarzschild radius r equals 2 gem on c squared in the Schwarzschild line element, and is now defined in the region between r is 0 and infinity. Now for radial motion of photons in the equatorial plane, ds is set to theta d phi in the equatorial plane to 0, and, and for the motion of photons, ds is also 0. Alright, and that gives us this object here. Okay, and then divide through by dr squared, it gives us this one. And then uh, take out the common factor of dv dr, and we get this null factor law now applies, because we have this factor times this factor in brackets here is equal to zero. So we have two solutions, first one dv dr is zero, no surprise there, we started with v equals a constant, that's how we constructed this, so that's uh, totally expected. And then the next part here is setting this in the brackets here equal to zero, or parentheses, sorry, equal to zero. Take the two over the other side, we get the minus two, and then we solve this first order differential equation here. And we get, uh, or we integrate it back, sorry, we get V is minus two R minus this object here. It's not a hard integration, that way you can do it by hand, you don't even need a, a CAS system or anything, or a computer system to do it. All right, now, let's define a time-like coordinate t uh, asterisk here in the form of ct asterisk equals v plus r. And ct asterisk is v plus r is, remember, v was this object here, and then plus r. Now, notice minus r plus r will cancel, and we're left with this object here. And what we'd then like to do is to get ct by itself. So we're going to add this to both sides, but we'll take that to the left there. CT will be CT asterisk plus this object here. And then we want the differential of that, so CDT is CDT asterisk plus this object here. Can I slow some C squared, so let's tidy up here, let me factorize out the R, and we end up with this nice object here. And tidy that up a little bit more, just to make it look a little bit more presentable, really. That bit there. Next bit over, let's square both sides, c squared to t squared, and then that means we're going to have three terms over here. So we have this first term, the middle term here, and this last term here. And now, the Schwarzschild line element, which is this, now becomes substituting in c squared to t squared into here, and the square brackets is all of this, and the square brackets, plus the radial part and angular part. Next bit over, let's now do the algebra, spanning it out. There we go. Right. And then we've got, and if you notice here, there's a common factor of this dr squared and this dr squared, so we'll take that outside, and that'll leave us with uh, 1 here minus this object here, and you'll see that that's a square, this 4 gems g squared m squared on c squared times 1 on r squared is simply the square of this, 1 squared minus that, so we have the difference of perfect squares times this factor here, and next line down we can expand that out, this, this, and of course this factor and this factor will cancel out, we're left with times dr, this times dr squared, which is what we get down here, and that's our new line element in retarded eddington Finkelstein coordinates, and in Let's write that out. Here it is. Our new line element is this object here. All right. Now, this line element is defined in the region from r greater than 0 to infinity. The Schwarzschild singularity at 2 gm on c squared is gone. This is continuous at that value. And then the coordinates t asterisk r theta phi are known as retarded Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Notice also this line element is not invariant with respect to a time reversal. So a time reversal transformation here, t star replacing minus t star, this is not very, you'll get a different value if you put um, uh, minus t prime in here. All right, now from earlier we have v equals a constant, which is no surprise, and then we found by solving one of the factors that was produced, we have this object here, so this is one, one geodesic, and v equals constant is another. Uh, oh, sorry, this is one solution, sorry, not geodesic. Now, given that ct asterisk is v plus r, where v is constant and v is this, 
we have the outgoing and ingoing radial null photon geodesics, C, T asterisk, which is constant plus R. I spoke a little bit too earlier, sorry, on the previous page. Here's our geodesics here, sorry. Remember, it's C, T asterisk is V plus R. So we have now, in gradient intercept form, if you like, 1R plus the constant here, we have one geodesic, and that is the outgoing one. And then we have the ingoing geodesic, which is... Uh, v plus R, V here, plus the R, and that gives us minus R minus the subject here, plus our constant. So that is now the uh, ingoing geodesic, and this is the outgoing one. And let's have a look at the outgoing geodesics, and notice the outgoing geodesics are continuous at the switch type radius 2gm on C squared. There's no longer a singularity there. And the ge geodesics are continuous. Next bit. The ingoing geodesics are still discontinuous at 2 gm on c squared, the Schwarzschild radius here. And this will have some interesting consequences here. The ingoing geodesics are discontinuous at this coordinate value, whereas the outgoing ones are not. Putting it all together, this is what it looks like. Let's have a look at the local light cones here. Far from the um, switch type radius here, the space time becomes asymptotically flat the further out we move. And so the, the light cones approach those in Minkowski space. The closer in near, they close up. And if you notice here, to the left of the switch type radius, the light cones are not tipped in, they're tipping out. They're pointing out. And that has some real implications because matter and energy now can't move inwards. They're directed outwards. There's no inward path here. By using the retarded Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, T asterisk R theta phi, the Schwarz type coordinate singularity here has been removed. That's what we found earlier. The line element is defined in the region from R is zero to infinity. So it is also the, uh, the time reversal of the advanced Eddington-Finkelstein line element in that that element had a plus here, you notice here, whereas this one has a minus. So this one describes something where matter could flow inwards to the singularity R equals zero, whereas this one, matter can't flow inwards. There are some consequences, and we'll have a look at those now. So the ingoing radial null geodesics are discontinuous at the Schwarzschild radius, remember these curved ones here? They're discontinuous at the Schwarzschild radius, which means that this is still a one-way boundary for all particles moving inwards. This time, all particles must move away from the singularity to R equals zero, as can be seen by the continuous straight lines moving outwards. Remember the straight lines here, the outward geodesics? They cross this Schwarz type radius, there's only so matter can move out, but matter cannot, because of the discontinuity in the ingoing geodesics, cannot move inwards. So all matter and energy is forcibly expelled from, from below the Schwarz type radius here. Notice the light cones have tipped over, they're pointing outwards. So the future direction of the particles is outwards, away from R equals zero. They can't go in. Right. This type of object is called a white hole. Now there's no evidence that any such object exists in reality and it may simply be the consequence of our choice of coordinates. Just like the schwarz type line element gives us the um, schwarz type radius and it's not a physical singularity, it's simply due to the choice of coordinates. Well maybe this white hole is nothing more than a choice of coordinates. But that may not be the case either. They may actually exist. And in 2006, a gamma ray burst, this between GRB 060614, was detected by the Swift telescope, lasting a total of 102 seconds, which suggests a long GRB. However, this GRB has properties that do not agree with either long or short GRBs. It doesn't fall into the usual category of a long GRB or a short GRB. There are two researchers, Aaron Retter, Alon Retter, sorry, and Shlomo Heller, in 2011 proposed that this and some other cases of observed GRBs may be the instantaneous birth of a white hole 
and its vigorous ejection of a large amount of matter. And that can be found at this web link here, which I'll put in the description for this video, so you can access it. The interesting thing about this is that line element for a white hole is the time-reversed line element for a black hole. So a white hole expels all matter and energy. No matter and energy can go in. It has a singularity from which matter and energy move outwards, whereas a black hole has a singularity from which matter and energy moves inwards. So you can say a white hole is a time-reversed black hole. Um, whether or not such things exist, though, is there's no evidence yet for it. Um, Alon, Reta and Shlomo, Shlomo Heller have proposed that this may well be a, a white hole, but you can read their paper at this link, which, as I said, I'll include in the description, but it may simply be a mathematical curiosity, but then again it may exist. But we also need to keep in mind that black holes were initially thought to be a mathematical curiosity. And now there's clearly a lot of evidence for their existence.